Shop's basement. Hosted by John Cardell. Damn I didn't even Devin. notice which golden girl I am. I'm Dickie, and it's Room After Dark. All right, guys, now that we've got that pesky monetization out of the way, and I created a new intro, so the music just cuts right off. <laughs> uh, let's just get right into it. Welcome to Grim After Dark, Warhammer's only late night show for some reason. My name is John. I'm here to misinform and entertain as we talk about the goings on over the last week in the world of Games Workshop. This week, we commit engagement suicide by talking about what's been going on with the Depths Custodes. Uh, we go around the net. Uh, and uh, we go once again through our favorite eBay price is redacted. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go on, let's meet the team who make it all possible. First up, it's the co-host with the co-most, all the way from Moscow, Idaho. He puts the T in R T T T. It's Danny McDevitt. Beautiful. I'm going to wait to see still how long still it still is. Still <laughs> muted. I had so much respect for you that I didn't want to screw up your beautiful <laughs> introduction. That I muted myself, and I didn't unmute, um, and the gag worked. It did it's totally it did a gag. You bet. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing distracts from your final college project, which is due on Monday, mm -hmm. uh, coming up. More than deciding to spend an hour uh, motion tracking uh, beautiful custodies art from Goonhammer onto the Golden Girls intro. Right. Uh, to help us with this engagement, though, uh, he's the beautiful face of everything square based, a fantasy enthusiast, and a forty k denier. He's the terror of Toronto. It's Val Heffelfinger. Uh, I have a question. Who's going to copyright claim us first? Golden Girls or Goonhammer? <laughs> I did send a copy of the video to Pete. And he um, and he was like, I put gold, uh, Golden Girls in my review in Goonhammer too, which I took as explicit permission to do it. Uh -huh. I mean. But absolutely, Golden Girls will. Yeah, have... read, read Pete's article. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's got to be fair use. Yeah. We just got a warning on the. <laughs> We've already gotten a warning. Yeah, heads up. We've detected a video on your stream and belonged to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the giant TV land watermark in the bottom corner of the screen. Ooh. Who knows? It's possible. Who knows? Robots well, can read now. We've been uh, teaching them with captures all this time, and it's finally bit us in the ass. Luckily. <laughs> Um, I did put the, the regular intro right after it, so we can edit that right away very quickly. Um, and then only the, the one person called Danny McDevitt, who, who's here live right as we start, um, will appreciate that video there. But that's okay. Um, well, you could spend another hour and a half and make it uh, um, portrait uh, mode uh, ratioed uh, because a copyright works different in shorts. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, my, my do it was it was a lot of fun to do it very good thank you for being a friend val thank you very good uh which golden girl was i you were the third one you're i just said you're, you're the sassy one yeah you're the sassy. i was Ro i was i was rose yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh man I, yeah, I had me for a b arthur but you know <laughs> pretty sure dickie was b arthur yeah no he yeah. was the dick dickie was the the, so the grandma good. Just so you were Sophia, all, yeah. I think they were all grandmas, Val. <laughs> well, Just like she was the grandma of, of the grandmas. Dickie, grandma. <laughs> yeah, like, you're a grandma. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, great. I feel like that, like nowadays, we're like, look at these old biddies, and they're like 35 when that when that show came out. Chat and coming in strong. I saw it. I saw it. I saw everything. Perfect. It's coming through, guys. You saw nothing. You're I don't really know what you're not about. helping our copyright claim case mm -hmm. that we are actively working on right now, apparently. Anything. Um. Uh, but finally, he's the man behind the Iron Curtain of Canada. Uh, he's the Canadian coach, but American sympathizer. It's Tech Priest Dickie. American sympathizer, huh? Oh, boy. So that, yeah. that's a new one. Dang, dude. Yeah. Oof. He comes from a town where their stadium is literally Tim Horton's stadium. All right, guys. So let's not count. Let's not question Dickie's bona fides. Aski wee wee. Someone gives him a coffee cup with the lid on. He just goes ape shit. He's like, All I'm saying is he's that. taking a lot of vacations to the united states lately and Ooh. uh hey whoa i mean the facts are the yeah. facts and they don't care about your feelings as people are no that's fair mar lagos in florida that's all i'm gonna say yeah it's like <laughs> yeah, look i think he's just a disney guy he's a disney guy he loves his disney <laughs> that's not helping that's anything spelled disney with a DJT. <laughs> um <laughs> let's bring up bring up the slideshow here i was gonna do the whole thing where like i had like curtains all the way along but then i'm like well that like 
there's going to be green in the slideshows and I don't want to have to put fire behind all of it. So yeah, we're just like this. Uh, before we really begin this week, uh, this guy on Twitter called Albert is right. asking the real questions. Did Twitter porn get boring or is it just me? <laughs> oh, it's a hard hit. I, like, I feel like that was an entire episode of the 40, the, 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 uh, show formerly known as the 40k adjacent show where i discovered that there was porn on twitter and i didn't know i didn't know that it was like a, I, I i really wonder what percentage twitter was always just porn the whole time it's porn all the way down i'm pretty sure is, is that like the meme where it's like always has been yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh joel and chad not enough budget for full curtains you're good hey, look you get what right. you pay for it <laughs> oh jeez john's known for his um but uh really what we have to do uh, is there there is porn got pretty interesting on twitter last week um oh. before we jump into the the meat of the matter shall we Great. say we review that now <laughs> yeah. this, danny, danny uh you send this to me oh now, yeah no as someone whose wife fair. is in the Hold next on. door room i have no idea who this is so if you want to kind of explain this to me I, no, I don't know either. Um, Pete sent this to me, and it's like, get it on the show. I'm like, dude, yeah, this is hilarious. Let's get this on. Can we, by the way, Pete the Falcon of uh, uh, Goonhammer fame, uh, you know how hard it is to squeeze this slide in in a week where the internet just melted under its own chin? <laughs> yeah. It's really difficult. But anyway, please continue, Danny. Well, it's a tweet from this woman. Uh, you may have noticed... I have been tweeting a lot of pictures with my clothes on recently. That was because I wanted at Warhammer to send me free stuff. But the new Custodes Codex looks so bad that I'm never wearing any clothes again. <laughs> here's some ass for my fellow Custodes enjoyers. I think I have a, a picture of the ass here, by the way, if we want to pull that up. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> got him. <laughs> got him. There's the ass. Uh, but yeah uh so yeah uh famed adult film actress uh and i guess warhammer influencer mia makova uh oh. being ignored uh by let's say how like you don't know who that is dicky <laughs> i just googled her seems like a nice lady <laughs> oh nice lady okay oh that's being, wonderful uh, attempted and maybe danny this is why we got product for so long is we kept mm -hmm. our clothes on no matter what we did, it was always fully dressed. And that's what Games Workshop wants, John. Yeah. Fully dressed people reviewing their products. Um, and now that she's been slighted for one release, uh, no more clothes. And really, it's just terrible. I mean, just looking at some of uh, uh, Ms. Balkova's work here, I think I understand what the inspiration for that very recent Custodes miniature uh, and its, its various ratios was based on. Uh, um, it all makes sense now. Yeah, it all, it's all linked together. Do you know 25% or 7% of the people Mia Malkova has slept with are sponsored by BlackRock Investments? Wow. You into Coincidence? Coincidence? I don't think so. Coincidence? Probably. <laughs> but who am I to say? She also bought up a lot of the real estate in Florida. Yeah, just pushing that... that that real estate portfolio and everyone. Uh, but anyway, we're not here to talk about random blonde women I've never heard of or seen before. Uh, mm. We're here uh, because some stuff happened this week and let's, let's get some state of play about it. Oh, okay. Oh, he's, I love it. He's just bopping along to that one. Is yes. state he of play is. actually just around the net again this time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, there, there's These both. segments have any meaning, John. <laughs> <laughs> In about a month, they will have clear defined meanings. Right now, where we're just so close to the finish line, they don't. They all just kind of Sick. blend together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I'm going to say to play where we attempt to take a lighthearted look at what's going to be going on in the Warhammer community in the last week. But this week, the threat of having to interact with a woman has caused the worst corners of the internet to just explode. Um, as I just fail in my button pressing. <laughs> Wow. Amazing. Dickie, I forgot you had a soundboard. I was really worried because it started playing right as I pressed a button on my computer. I'm like, 
That was me. The Mew Mount Cobra <laughs> reprint was just for the show. I see you're, I see you're in an old world. <laughs> I can't even talk English. Uh, I see you're a uh, that other show I'm on, uh, listener, uh, because that's the deep dive button. Uh, but also a good awuga sound. Yeah, there's a good awuga yeah, sound. That's a good awuga sound. Dive sound. I want to say, everybody. just so we're distinct from your other shows, um, that is uh, for sure a wooga and not a deep dive. We want to be respectful yeah. here, and not to people, <laughs> but to intellectual property. It's just a duck dive. I just wanted to get in on the copyright claim uh, bonanza that. Uh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this show's gonna be. I think he's gonna have to edit so much to get just like kung fu, like all of these IP claims that we're gonna receive from all the stuff we're doing. He's gonna do um, those things. Not but the internet okay. exploded this week, not because the Custodes Codex is really bad. I think we're all overlooking that point. It's not a great codex. Um, but this tweet here from Warhammer official, which I'm sure is by some kind of rogue intern. Uh, with just no power whatsoever, said since the first of the 10,000 were created, there have always been female custodians. And Danny, the world kind of blew up at this. Was I mean, it this that people blew up at? Or was there something else? It was this. Well, it was, so, well I mean, it was a passage in the book, which is what Warhammer is addressing here, I think. Mm -hmm. right. There is a two-page story in um in the new custodies codex uh about uh, a participant in the blood games who is uh <laughs> goes a little overboard but it, it's a female participant as custodians uh it's not overtly said throughout the book like hey there's this thing um so warhammer official came out with this tweet uh which stated that yeah it's a thing uh don't worry about it it's always been a thing and that kind of caused a little bit of a meltdown yeah, people were upset about this. I like I don't know. I I can see why it feels uh like pretty pretty freaking lazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like and it is a lore change. Like I don't think anybody's really like is anybody's going out here and saying like, "Oh, well, like this has definitely been in the lore before. It's it's been there forever." Like mm -hmm. It's not. This is a pretty ham-fisted way to do it. And I can get people being upset, but like the change is like doesn't mean anything really, no. I don't think. It's what it's talking cool. about I'm glad it gives anything. people inclusivity. <laughs> like I'm happy about that part. But like what? it doesn't mean anything for the fluff of the game, really, because these are like you know, relatively faceless guardians of the emperor that are like shuttered away from like the Imperium. What you know? Crazy yeah, except me. they have vaginas, Danny. <laughs> okay, cool. Maybe I don't know. Do, do custodians have genitalia? I'm pretty sure space marines. I'm don't. pretty sure custodians can fuck. Well, Look, space marines. <laughs> oh, they fucking. <laughs> sure, they they surely fucked the new codex. That's for sure. Yeah. Whoa. Immediately. I don't think it's that bad. It's pretty. It's pretty bad, but I don't think it's that bad. Oh, uh, uh, and then chat here saying, <laughs> "Was I saw this here?" Why does everyone have a soundboard on this show? And it's just purely <laughs> so we can rub it into Danny because I didn't provide him with the soundboard. Um, and sadly, Val and Dickie got their own. Um, but yeah, it's just just so we can have that there. Um, I, I suspect actually that um, that this was a late editorial ad because they were like, "Oh shit, this book is terrible. We need we need we need to go to Plan B." Unleash the VJJ, and then and then they knew it was the, we would provide the ultimate smokescreen to distract from. Uh, yeah, the rules won't look quite so bad. If we... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No one's talking about the fact that this True. is like one of the weakest Codex releases that's come out so far this edition. I've heard some. I've heard some extreme hyperbole from that, which I found fascinating. Just that, uh, not just this edition. I've heard in a very very long time uh, from. From various people so like i i find that again i have no context or understanding of why uh but uh yeah i i don't know this is this is a it's also really interesting just from like a a a, uh, a sort of social media management perspective or even just like a messaging perspective obviously like whether like they must have known given the ridiculous meta of female space marines on the internet <laughs> and how contentious that point is that them being like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just say uh, custodians have, have women. 
would be something of a troll um, I to some think people. The one senior manager made this tweet, put it out, sat in the little break room, got his little teacup. He's just sipping away like, ah, oh, man, that's really fucking easy. I don't know why these like social media guys are complaining. You just send one message. That's it. It's done. <laughs> no idea about the fallout that, that would happen from like even suggesting that people have to interact with women even in, in model form um but what i've done i think this is important and there's a, a lot of a lot of reaction so i've amassed um some reactions i, I amassed a lot of twitter reactions but then hellstorm uh, war gaming did a really good job going through the twitter awfulness um so a lot of youtube comments uh from very pro and anti kind of these videos here um the first one i want to bring up here uh it's oh yeah we're looking at totally reasonable internet reaction uh was the name of the it's not the around the net <laughs> no no <laughs> around the net dad i totally didn't spend all of my time uh creating a website uh, the past few days I, I totally did the show uh days in advance not just today uh, mm -hmm. but yeah we have totally reasonable internet reaction the first of which is from the very comically named Iron Patriot 3ID. Um, since uh, so, this is a response to the official Warhammer site uh, about there being official custodes, so they're being female. Uh, he says, Since when show your work, and this is coming from a custodian player, never once in any of the codexes did it say that. Now, if you're talking about Sisters of Silence, sure, but that's not custodies. One of my favorite things is that, like. They hadn't redone Sisters uh, of Battle for a hundred years, mm -hmm. and they finally released a kit, and it was a, f a female unit that was not allowed to speak. Uh, <laughs> that was a Games Workshop that understood its horrible, somewhat horrible fan following. Um, Their special unit. Uh, uh, this this custodian player. Space Marines by making them sandwiches, I, I think, in the new book as well. Unbelievable. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is this reminds me. There was a, a sport you you might know Spider Valor. There was a sports team where a, a, a team tweeted something out, and then one of the fans replied, "Oh yeah, cite your source." And then the guy was like, "Me, I'm literally the team." Um, <laughs> like this, this is big, like this energy. Uh, but this is kind of the last one here from Twitter, which is generally a cesspool. And what I think is super interesting uh, about ninety five percent of the negative response to this um, all had a blue check mark. Hmm. It was kind of a nice little you know, correlation, correlation, not causation. There, uh, Johnny. I don't know what you're uh, what you're talking about. Maybe a little bit of both. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Next up, we have this one here. I have some of the interesting ones that I want to um, put out here, but this one here um, says this started with the book "The Lion, Son of the Forest" by Mike Brooks by adding Z Zem Zim Zer pronouns for admin characters. Now it's female custodes. Pointless changes just to appease a very small minority of people. Danny, you how mean, do you feel about the gender of robots? I mean, I don't really care. They're not he really human anymore, really. I mean, you might call them trans. You might call them transhuman, in fact. Um, but uh, I also just love a very small minority of people. You mean half? <laughs> I think he's speaking more about the the war gaming community sort of a uh, very true very true uh, where, where uh women uh, are a very small minority of people there <clears throat> um okay moving on they get better danny i promise people attacked me when i said cavill needed to shut the fuck up and leave 40k <laughs> out of the mainstream or this would happen well who's laughing now i don't know man <laughs> is it you <laughs> No, he got beat up. He shouldn't be laughing. Oh, oh man. I don't think it was a physical attack. Uh, Val, how much do you think this is Warhammer kind of emerging into the mainstream? I will say there are graphs later on in my presentation. Oh. Um, if you mean this is Warhammer emerging into the mainstream of 20-something years ago, sure. Um, the acknowledgement of, uh, of, of women as 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 potentially part of it sure um i mean okay fair enough but like the majority of factions have female like characters or models in them getting like, there getting there yeah 
No, I mean it's it's for real. Like yeah, guard dude, what factions other than dude, these Marines Eldari. and Custodes like don't have female models. Well, not counting the ones that don't have a gender. Yeah, sure. Like Zorks, it's like yeah, whatever. Necrons. Do Necrons have females? Yeah. Yeah. And then orcs, even then, they had the the Blood Bowl cheerleaders. Uh, so well, that's wise. fantasy and Blood Bowl, which is actually a weird separate universe. Then it's like a yeah, it's a splinter it's universe its own thing. Yeah, yes. Our, Blood, uh, get into Blood Bowl. I have gnomes in Blood Bowl, John. We don't it's, acknowledge this gnomes. Might, this might enrage both of you a little bit, but are orcs mushrooms in fantasy? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Now they are unequivocally yes, but not Blood Bowl because. When they did the mushroom explanation in the Gorka Morka era, uh, they didn't they didn't they didn't reapply that to Blood Bowl, hence why you still have female orcs in Blood Bowl. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> this female custodian paragraph is certainly an attempt to boil the frog. I haven't heard that before. On the female really? Space Marine issue. Yeah, I haven't heard that. I I'll doubt go. it will be this edition, but this indicates that this is the goal. Um, I guess, Danny Valdicki, does this this response prove to you like the, the people who are saying this just don't have great rhetorical skills for li uh, literature or media? I can't believe you, have, you say that about Al Gore, uh, who, of course, <laughs> uh, made the uh, boiling of the frog analogy very famous in an inconvenient truth about the gender of space marines a tremendously oh. influential documentary uh, from uh, yeah, the early 21st I century hmm. i remember he got up in a scissor lift to be more impactful and then the rest i don't remember as much <laughs> he's blacked out from the sheer verticality um what this 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 response tells me is that they didn't actually read the the codex or, or look through it because it's not a paragraph it's like a two-page story um which is well, okay john but like what people have access to and like not everybody has the full two pages like to read That's this fair. The codex isn't actually did, out yet did you read that story by the way danny i haven't yet no it's bad shit insane it's about a female custodian who's competing in the blood games you know her plan to win the blood games she What's has that? a vagina put an enormous <laughs> work? uh put an enormous bomb in the throne room oh okay <laughs> okay so, most people are like I'm going to sneak this animal in. I'm going to sneak this like enemy combatant in. This will work this way. An what about a bomb that just kills everyone? Smart lady. I mean, that's efficient. It's just the type of thing that women would come up with. Girls, <laughs> girls <laughs> get it done. That's yes, right. The big explosion for sure. I, I won the blood games, but at what cost? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, oh, this is this is the the part that I'm super excited about here. This was a recurring theme um, from all of this here. Uh, this one first here. Get your 3D printers, lads. Oops. Let's make them freaking bleed for this, which I think means they're going to hit people with 3D printers. Okay. That was getting um, weird. Yeah, they knew we didn't want this. They knew we freaking hated this stuff. Nothing is too big to fail. Look at Star Wars and every other franchise. People like this have ruined. Give GW nothing. And then follows up there's another one here is very similar but it says i think it's time to jump ship people who have been through this before with things like star wars and lord of the rings know this is just the beginning before jump ship to? Uh, unfortunately for the battle tech community battle tech um and also oh, okay. evil online but they're going to be just terrified to realize there's women in those games and how oh, no far longer um but before you respond to these tweets i want to pull these these graphs i made uh found here uh -huh. up <clears throat> So this is uh, search trends over time, um, over the last 20 years, uh, so yeah. from 2004 onwards. Mm -hmm. The bottom table is uh, search trends for Star Wars. The top is Warhammer 40K, which you might notice Warhammer 40K has been uh, more popular than Star Wars all throughout uh, for you, searchability. Do you ever do a direct comparison here? Because Google Trends is fucked in how it actually demonstrates stuff. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that if you use that compare button, 40k would be absolutely squished by Star well, Wars. Crash, in fact. Beyond that, uh, there's two spikes in Star Wars, really. There is when Episode 3 was released in 2004, and there was when Episode 7 was released and wherever that came out. And then the popularity has been pretty consistent throughout, if you look at the graph there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 40k, uh, popularity has been pretty consistent over the last 20 years, uh, rising since COVID. 
Yep. So. And also, what's that big old spiky, spiky bit there as well? I, I, I would bet is Henry Cavill saying he was interested in 40K. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I didn't hit the compare <clears throat> button like you so accurately pointed out, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I would say the interest in these topics isn't changed. And if anything, interest in 40K is rising. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's okay. That's, that's probably something you could extrapolate from that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for, for shitting on my analytical data. I appreciate it. <laughs> I've actually recently Sorry. been fucking around with Google Trends and going mad with how it's actually like presented. Hmm. It's it's all right. I I I don't really I don't really get it. Uh, it's weird. It's, you can, you can only need to look at our, our viewing numbers to know that we don't get it. It's fine. <laughs> hey. Hey. Um, this next one here was another common theme that kind of went through all of these comments. We have sisters of silence be like WTF. And then personally, I think there is no need for female custodians other than just being weird. Um, the range of Sisters of Silence exists and should be expanded on. Uh, personally, I will ignore I will ignore this stupid bit of lore, counting it as a typing error they meant to write he. Okay. <clears throat> that aside, the, the big argument has been like, Sisters of Silence exist. Why don't we buff those, uh, make those better instead of adding, adding like... Yeah, the women who don't talk. To, to other people. Well, but what do you mean? But like, what do you mean by buff? Right? Like, what is that? Like, nobody really cares about the rules. This is obviously not a rules thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is just a lore change. So, I guess, why do you think that by introducing Death Watch, when you could have just simply buffed Ultramarines, is that hugely offensive to other Space Marine chapters that you're just introducing new stuff? No, I mean, of course not. Strange. Um, but you get a lot of these because it seems to be like um ways of justifying terrible opinions. Sure, sure. And that's fair. Like, and call them out for that, right? Like, because yeah. it's a bad opinion. Uh, but or it's it impossible. Have good, it doesn't have good grounding in like reality. It has all to based on like I don't know. Danny, just... you're pretty much a professional lawyer and you moderate 40k groups and you can't get to these people. Uh, so yeah, well, I hope to the rest <laughs> of us have. I um on on this on this topic i I have actually seen one bit of of like uh commentary that i really really enjoyed uh the and it's, it's particularly uh triggered by the um the star wars comment in the previous set of slides there and it's by a guy named haywo and haywo uh does uh largely aos content occasionally verges into uh uh fantasy stuff uh old world stuff but Haywell basically uh, did a take and, and talked about how he's upset that. Um, and I, please go out and watch the video. If it's 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 a really nice little video essay. Um, but he talks about how um, he doesn't enjoy the fact that you know his position on Star Wars, which is that the movies suck, um, is also conflated with uh, people who say the movies suck because. Uh, they introduce people of color and, you know, other, sure. you know, and, and emphasize strong female characters and stuff. Aside from that fact, I would be of the opinion as well. They're not very good movies um, for a lot of, lot of like strong critical reasons. Oh, and buddy. so he, he carries, he carries that over, over to uh, essentially talking about retcons. And he talks about, um, uh, about how in 40k he's actually in a similar position on female space marines and then i went hey whoa what like uh, which is specifically that he doesn't think that female space marines are necessarily a good idea because um of the narrative reasons for space marines isn't just that girls are yucky mm -hmm. it's that you have in the space that the, the ecclesiarchy and adeptus custodies you have a satire of Things uh, like the Roman Catholic Church, you have you have actual like foundational satire there. That if you were to fuck with it, it becomes more and more divorced from that, and just becomes a literal fan fiction for fascism, as opposed to something that is a commentary on our real world. Um, and I think he cribs that in, not really giving a shit about this particular change because it doesn't really have a real material impact on any of that kind of stuff. It doesn't really change. Like, yes, if there's, sure. if there's, if there's women, it doesn't, it doesn't change the nature of, of like 
40k <laughs> and sort of like the substance in between. Uh, isn't that what a dreadnought is? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> correct. That was my first like, but but this is another what? YouTube comment that 86 people liked. Um, I think still what at still fib here is looking to do is a uh, quote that is a diversity and in, uh, inclusion sort of thing. And he's saying, well, why wouldn't a disabled person be a dreadnought just to be more inclusive? But reading that, and even my wife, who only knows like through osmosis what Warhammer is through me, was like, aren't they already crippled in there? Like, yeah, that's part of the point of a dreadnought. So, <laughs> so literally is a walking sarcophagus. Yeah. It was, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure a white scars dreadnought would be really appreciative of wheels and that would look pretty badass, but still. Yeah, sure. no. <clears throat> oh, Val, I needed your input on this one here. Uh, All right. Because I know uh, the economy and finance of the Imperium is something that's often talked about in lore. Uh, he says, the reason for not having female Astartes <laughs> applies to custodies, but they're amplified like 10x. It's already too expensive to augment a woman to the point she could become an Astartes candidate. And in the end, you'd only have a woman who's only as fit and capable as your average Marine. It's too much time, effort, and money for a substandard product. Val, you want to talk about like the economy of the Imperium and kind of who's which 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 position in the Space Marine chapter is paying for this stuff? That's the thing, man. Ball don't lie. It all comes out in the in the in the PL. And uh, I think this is a decisive <laughs> This is a decisive strike against the feasibility of female custodies. Uh, clearly too expensive, much like public health care uh, and, uh, uh, you know, education too expensive. Can't be done. Uh, so why even try? There's just something terrifying to me to think that someone has gone through decades of augmentation and rigorous combat training and has been like brainwashed into being this perfect soldier and their job within the chapter is to go over the expense reports for the last quarter. Like that just I don't but like that. There is there is there's the administratum. I mean, someone's got to be yeah. counting these beans. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of finance, uh, this is something else that came through pretty frequently Ooh. on these here. Uh, was <laughs> AOS is a test bed and they are moving full steam ahead into 40k. I just want to point in and guys, you can correct me on this. Fantasy was always sort of a test bed for some 40k rules. Like there's always been sort of like kind of stuff like in the 90s, 2000s, or I'm off base with that. I think it's the other way around. Or other way around. But, the, but yeah, regard like they've always tested some stuff and other. Yeah, for sure. There's rules. always been interplay. Um, I mean, I, because there's one dominant or or a group of dominant writers in the in the studio at any given time, and they're writing both games, so they take ideas from yeah. their brain. Yeah, so he says, I'm also convinced the recent Stormcast Eternal changes are to bring in more female models. Uh, female versions of things aren't bad, but when there is a culture war fueled by corporate agendas, it makes things a little different. Uh, Danny, what is the difference between female models and female models during a culture war fueled by corporate agendas? Sean, you're getting female models for the wrong reasons. <laughs> I, I just want to let everyone know this this poster's name is Captain Fancy Cat, too. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's just make okay. everything so clear. Okay. This yeah. guy made bank on Wall, Wall Street bets. He he's uh he's definitely had uh he's had some really decisive <laughs> input. I also really want to uh point out a few things here that could be going on. One is that uh BlackRock Group was uh, accused of being, uh, by the way, one of the largest asset holders on the planet. At least it used to be the largest. They own 6.8% of Games Workshop. <clears throat> yes, there's a very simple reason for that, which is they uh, are one of the largest providers, if not the largest provider of index funds, which just follow a benchmark. So if Games Workshop is a large part of the, which is hilarious, the United Kingdom uh, uh, stock market, they're going to have to own a whole lot of, uh, of, of Games Workshop stock. The same goes for Vanguard groups. They're both massive index fund providers, uh, ETFs, and mutual funds. That's why they own so much of Games Workshop. It is not because they think Games Workshop is necessarily the best stock to, to buy. It's because they are index fund providers. That's why that exists. However, there is a culture war element to BlackRock, which is that they... Um, 
uh, strongly pushed. Um, uh, I, well, I can't believe it. I'm blanking on this, but essentially just um, evaluating stocks, not just on financials, but on, you know, whether they have good governance controls, whether or not they're environmentally sustainable and, you know, creating metrics around that to try and get, you know, more responsible investing practices in there, which caused blowback on BlackRock and made them a target of, uh, of this whole silly cultural mm -hmm. stuff, which is very silly. Yeah, um, so a number of things no. going on here that are just fucking batshit fucking. Dumb. I think it's really brave of you to announce to everyone that you are an investor in both BlackRock and Vanguard, Val. Uh, that takes a lot of courage. The thing is, is that uh, you do not invest in them. They invest in you. Um, I think it's more likely clearly a conspiracy um, <laughs> to influence culture, like, obviously. <laughs> So uh, like it's, better, it's, it's all right because one of my dearest friends confused Black Rock and Black Water. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what Black <laughs> Water is. Contract yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they invested heavily in GW for their protocols, <laughs> <laughs> which was really funny to me. But anyway, uh, um, Ernst Jaeger in chat he says I'm massively skeptical of female models actually bringing in any meaningful female numbers. You know, honestly, me too. But it's cool that they're there. Um, I don't think anyone is going to look at Games Workshop and Warhammer and be like, oh, I can have girls in this army now and that be the deciding factor for them. But honestly, it's just a thing that's kind of cool that it's happening. Like, it's not a giant change personally for me. Um, yeah, for these people, absolutely. But for me, not so much. I will, I will say that like, as people who represent the dominant culture of wargaming, uh, white males in their now 40s, um, you know, like we, like everything is a reflection of us, right? So we don't, we don't notice when, when there's represent. we notice if we're, you know, beholden to certain beliefs, if there's representations of others, but for the most part, I don't, I don't, I would not have noticed or cared about this at all necessarily personally, um, uh, with, without it being highlighted. However, if you are not a person, uh, amongst the dominant culture and you do see yourself literally representing the game that does make a difference to people and i don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that beautiful <laughs> my, my fun thing now is just to, to kind of scroll through the comments i found until i find one that breaks danny and this is one of them <laughs> i apologize <laughs> for continuing to try and take this topic seriously no no stop. you're good you absolutely should i mean this is uh, trying to strike the balance between the ridiculous and the serious fact of it is like an important thing um but this one here says great <laughs> wonderful so this is the custodian life now got into this army because of how cool they were in lore and now i'm stuck with losers begging for women to dom them it's not even like they made good detachments and balance sheets to compensate the stat <laughs> blocks suck the detachments suck the new lore <laughs> sucks i think i'm shelving my custodies for good i got too much nostalgia to destroy them or sell them um i mean to be fair he points out they're all really bad um i mean this I is will, the fairest comment yet i will like, say by wide margin he says, I'm stuck with losers begging for mom, women to dom them. Um, that happened long before. Uh, like, just because oh, they yeah. don't tell you doesn't mean that they're not thinking it. But I'm guessing if you're at a 12 person RTT, at least three of those people are begging for women to dominate them. <laughs> <laughs> and then and they're at the just, top tables, I'll tell you. you know, the nostalgia is important when you're really invested in an army. Oh, this is just a slide of when the custodians were first a playable army six years ago. Um, but that's just. Completely accidental. I uh, get nostalgic over something that's, you know, six years old. Uh, this was just another terrible one. Just saying the marveling is incoming. I like that they've used, uh, turned that into a, a thing of just be, becoming terrible. Yeah, Marvel um, movies suck for, like, lots of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> also, because... Marvel, the fucking shining example of something way ahead of the curve for giving represent like very purposefully as a countercultural move mm -hmm. in comic books sure. very pers yeah. purposefully giving representation to to people the x-men uh, for god's sakes I was say val it's almost like you're saying that's the entire point of the x-men yes. i don't appreciate that's, that is the foundation right. of its popularity is is the fact that it included people who looked different thought different weren't that weren't mainstream uh it weren't represented in mainstream culture like uh, fuck this guy oh man i don't like it uh, uh he says we need to vote with our wallets i guarantee none of these people have bought a miniature since fifth edition oh. uh, but we need to vote with our wallets and raise a whole stink of it on social media or else they get away with it 
Uh, do you think like again the GW boardroom is like, oh shit, guys, we've received eight thousand hate gonna, mails, oh, but if we receive nine thousand, then we're not going to get away with this. Well, um, well, hold on a second here. Like yeah. maybe Games Workshop is more like Bud Light than other brands than they would care to admit. I maybe mean, we're going to suddenly see. Uh, <laughs> is that a person? A retraction. <laughs> um and then this just bitches about ubisoft uh but in terms of quality ubisoft still make quality games they just release more shit <clears throat> and then let wow me see. the I hits keep I, coming they keep coming i have like one more that i really want to hit so we're just gonna we're gonna scroll through here <laughs> there's so many and start small changes uh as not to make it too obvious and there's a there's a lot of responses where like the quoting 1984 with like we've always been at war with Eurasia, well you know which is a cool thing to quote, uh, but completely misunderstands the point of the book. Um, just saying it was a misprint. <laughs> the last person was tube newbie, by the way. Just so yeah. Um, honestly, I don't even have the energy anymore at this point. I'm considering just giving up on 40k. Get, get, keep it for so long but this happens i'd rather leave now with good memories and see it bastardized first custodians then female space marines then feminism oh, okay. uh, feminism by the way comes after everything's already been achieved famously. i thought it was female seeking male <laughs> yeah not female space marine <laughs> uh, it's just... first they came for the custodians but i did not speak up for i was not a custodian <laughs> then they came anyway <laughs> And then this one here just said, not one single for fan of 40k is gonna like this. Um, I'm I'm ambivalent. I think it's cool if you like it, but it doesn't really matter. So that doesn't really super count. Uh, don't buy their book. Refuse for it to be canon. He edited this, by the way. Wait till they put female emperor twin that's female and it's female hidden primark. Then each lore will follow to oblivion. Next, a gay necron lord. This is someone who hasn't read the infinite and divine. Where the, the entire spine of that book focuses on an <laughs> Oregon Chase and Love Angle. <laughs> oh. Also, obviously, a uh, gay Necron Lord. Um, Based on Egyptians, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that, one, that one flies for me, sure. Oh, and then the final comment here, and this is the final one. We did skip through some, thankfully. It says, uh, some people in the comments have no vision. They don't realize what is happening. We finally have giant mommies. Oh. Well, Danny and I already had the Troll Princess, so we're good. Yeah, and that's, you know, the three people in your RTT uh, who have uh, Domination Fantasies. <laughs> um, this got massively blown out of proportion. It took about 30 minutes longer than I wanted it to take. Well, you did it's... you did have 45 slides on it, so I mean... You did have uh, quite could've... a bit. It wasn't quite 45. Uh, it was around 21. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you keeping count? <laughs> he's not keeping count uh let's do some really quick around the net because i got it right this week yeah welcome to around the net uh the part of the show that's kind of well, like the other part of the show um, <laughs> that's, a handle. But no. that's a handle uh, uh danny what are we looking at you say it's a handle i don't see that what do you see, John? <laughs> it's, the, it's the Mark IV cockplate. It's formed around the member for maximum. So, like when they run, like imagine yeah. further okay, evidence you, that 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 men male only space marines are canon uh, yeah, exactly. is what that is. They, so they, what happens, it's right there on the sprue. You're a primaris marine. You're running to the battle lines, but uh -huh. you're distracted because every time you like running, you're like, foom, foom, foom. like your dick is like hitting the side of the cockplate. Because it's just and it's it's ceramite, so it hurts a lot. So you have to put in this fitted cock plate. There's no way that that thing doesn't have a port <laughs> to lock into inside the power armor. I'm sorry. I just I'm just gonna dis. I'm like yeah. And maybe that's, that's that's the, space start as dudes when they just have the most hilariously withered away genitalia. Yeah, it would be so small. <laughs> like it's just... Atrophied is the word. This uh, is one I've, I've wanted to get up for a while. Uh, night, Knights pilots trying to fight a Nid Bio Titan while their ancestors are doing backseat gaming and asking when he's going to find a fine maiden to have kids. This comes off of the lore that when a knight pl uh, plugs into his uh, his 
machine for the first time mm -hmm. all of his family jump in his head here so guys i really quickly want to ask you what is the most distracting thing your ancestors could tell you during battle uh that my grandma was a custodies is that custodies a woman <laughs> <That'd be so laughs> <distracting>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, <laughs> we'll jump past this guy here. I bad CGI. Oh, this is also one I've wanted to get up for a while. And this is oh. before we, we do a little thing here. And uh, this is from Reddit. Am I oh, the, no. Am I the asshole for tossing my boyfriend's nerdy models without asking? I've got a serious moral dilemma, and I need your collective wisdom to help me sort this out. Here's the story. My boyfriend and I have been living together for over a year now, and things have been going smoothly, but there's a catch. His fascination with intricate sci-fi and fantasy models. While I respect his passion, I've never quite understood it, and honestly, I've always considered them a bit nerdy. Now, here's where it gets complicated. I recently decided to declutter our living space and toss a significant number of his models without even discussing it with him. <laughs> The result, a massive argument where he was understandably hurt that I could dismiss something that means so much to him. But wait, there's more. He spent thousands of dollars on those models, way more than I have on my own hobbies. It adds another layer to this issue as if it feels like I've thrown away his hard-earned money. Feels like? He what? did. You actually did this. <laughs> this what is it? maybe, this is like one of the most toxic, like self-absorbed people you've ever heard write anything in their life. Like... And we just did like 40 minutes on toxic self for people writing things. Um yeah, this is this is a this feels like this isn't about uh plastic models. This feels like it's a, about a bad relationship. Uh <laughs> and what a is... really passive aggressive person uh now trying to go to Reddit to uh get clout and absolve her conscience if she had one. Uh so yeah. What's the worst mistake that your guys' spouses have made in relation to your Warhammer stuff? What's the worst? Say that again. What was the question? What's the worst mistake your wife is or spouse oh. has made in relation to your 40k or your fantasy? Uh, Knowing how much it costs. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my wife calls them dollies. It's, oh, it's adorable. That's not a mistake. Uh, it still kind of hurts my feet. I, I got I got my wife to call them murder dolls after a while. Um, I I I think I've told this story before, but walking down the street, uh, apropos of nothing, on our way into the office one day, she turned to me and said, "I'd rather die than play Warhammer." <laughs> to, to which I replied, "Like, not live like anymore? <laughs> like, like not not live? Like you'd rather not." Not live than play one three hour game of Warhammer, and apparently it was a hard line. Uh, but no, I'd say she's yeah. been uh, tremendously patient. I think so, over time, probably started closer to this asshole, uh, to be honest with you, on the spectrum. But I think over time, I think, um, I think has realized that it's, it's resulted in a lot of really great things. Yeah, so, I was gonna say yeah. seventh edition like hit us all differently for your wife. It just made her want to die. And, and I think several <laughs> people felt that way. Um, before yeah. we come to you, Danny, here real quick and chat here. Uh, someone's grandmother threw out a bag of bits once. Uh, Ernst Jaeger's wife keeps calling it his orc Shreks, <laughs> uh, which I think is a fair description. Oh, uh, man. That just triggered, like, actually, like, a really... Painful memory. Well, yeah. My grandma. Oh, man. Fuck. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she was, like, doing grandma stuff and, like, cleaned my room while I was at school. And she threw away my Gorka Morka for it. No, uh, like the, the the plastic card thing, because it wasn't it wasn't her fault. Like I felt so bad because I had like stashed it in a garbage bag. Like it looked like it was yeah. garbage. Like the thing looked like garbage, and then it was in a garbage bag. And she was, and I'd asked her, I was like, "Hey, Grandma, you see my Gorka Morka for it? It looked like this." And like she clearly knew immediately, but like days later, like came to me like sorrowfully and was like, "I think I threw it away." And I remember just like bursting into tears because of how sorry she was and being like no it's all right uh but holy shit guys, oh, that, car guys worked. that was that was a very deep memory the door the door worked it was a, it was a beautiful outpost <sighs> it was okay. cool but don't worry grandma that's, i forgave you been a, been a bummer of a show and i apologize to you guys let's <laughs> No.
Nothing like a little capitalism to get us all back on track. Yeah, we're excited right. again. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're positive now. There's no way I could bring this segment down by re- talking about women again. But greetings, oh, Mark. No. What did you of Google, YouTube. John? <laughs> Get ready to test your powers of fiscal evaluation on the prices of Redacted, uh, where we oh. challenge the breadth of your second half of knowledge. Today's mission, we're going to accurately assess the sacred value of sold items I found for searching the term female space marines. <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs> Wow. Oh, right. so on that note, John, this first... could end so badly, dude. Like, <laughs> we're here now. Yeah. Our right. most disliked uh, well, ever. they'll probably just be big titty Marines. So, you know, yeah, at least we're giving our. Okay, that's, yeah, that's fine. These are all things that sold on eBay. So someone paid it's money. It's going to be really hard because this, these are all going to be terrible conversions and fucking big titty sculpts. All right, let's go. Well, what's funny is this, uh, I think, uh, War Games exclusive female Chaos Space Marine conversion, uh, she can't run into battle because she would fall over. Uh, but, Val, how much did someone pay for this beautiful thing? $24. $24. I'm going to say $30. $20. Well, you want to hire me? Nine dollars. Yeah, all right. That was actually cool. it's not badly painted, and yeah. somebody who wants a model like that doesn't care about how their army looks. So but it is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Our next item is Warhammer 40k Chaos Space Marine World Eaters female jackals. Oh, this one sold by a, a tech priest Dicky. No. <laughs> He never owned such a thing. <laughs> All right, so uh, any female models, <laughs> you know no, that he won the last round. Uh, how much? <sighs> All right, this one I'm going nineteen dollars. Nineteen, Danny. Uh, twenty-five bucks. Twenty-five and thirty. Oh, was the right answer. good one, Danny. You'll be happy to know uh, there's multiple squads of these available. Uh, surprisingly, not a whole lot of options uh, searching for female space marines. Just, just That's a it. heads up here. <laughs> Next up, we have Rogue Trader Female oh, Warrior no. Jane Adventurer Space Marine Citadel Metal Y964. Danny? I, God, I don't even know where to start with this. This is uh, a historic a piece. Point. Yeah. I think it's high, but not real high for a single model. I'm going to go $50. $50. See, when I imagine people spending too much on things I put on eBay, I do imagine just tech bros spending too much all the time. But this is this is like, this is, this is a is very, is what did you guess, Jenny? $50? $50, bucks, yeah. 50 bucks. Uh, all right, I'm going $150. Wow, $150. Wow, Val values women, is what I hear from this interaction here. But they actually only spent uh $31. $31. That's amazing because that's that's like the that's like the the crux of of the like one of the big cruxes of the the female space marines debate, isn't it? That like they used to make female space marines, yep, sure. And people there are buying go. them up cheap to destroy Piece of history. them. History, destroy them to melt them down. Yeah, no one. <laughs> they should be spent in... they're like the book burners, like <laughs> banned in are... it's banned in Florida. Um... People are buying Jane the Adventure to melt her down to build male custodies. <laughs> Just Fortunately, their recasters exist, John. <laughs> um... Refuse to make it. Oh, jeez. Next up. A uh, wild bangerang Warhammer Necron leggings L Games Workshop official. Danny Val, how much did people pay for pre owned pants? Like, that's, I mean, on its, like, immediately, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> Let's see. I know how much. Jeff paid. Brown in chat? <laughs> he, owns, he owns the Blood Angels version of these. He, I think they retail for about $50, right? Wow. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. 
I'm so, gonna. So <laughs> Mark I, Murphy what? says I can smell those. Yeah, <laughs> right. That, that's why they cost so much. Oh God! I bet. The, oh man! I bet what they're a... so hot. All right, uh, John. I'm gonna guess uh, forty-five dollars. Forty-five. Okay. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going 1999. 1999. That's a way better guess. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. I immediately regret that. 37. Now Danny's crushing. 37. 31. Russian. Danny knows pants. <laughs> Look, I bought a pair of pre-used pants once or twice on the internet. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not above secondhand pants. Look, this isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> Look, we all know Danny respects women the most as opposed to his 3-1 three, three, currently lead over Val, but can Val oh. respect them a little bit more and get up to 3-2? I don't know. Uh, with this last item that I desperately had to claw around to find, uh, we have the Warhammer 40K <laughs> Battle Force Auric Champions Adeptus Custodes 427 pre-order uh, Rubagiga. I don't even know what this retails for. I think they're three hundred dollars Canadian. Two hundred ten American, I think. So I was gonna guess about two hundred dollars American. Uh, this sold in August of twenty twenty four. Of twenty what? No, April of twenty twenty four. So it just went I, for pre order on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a thing this that's happening right deal. now. Yep. Yeah. The joke is is because it's a, a women focused prices are redacted and and this is just a standard custodies box. No, I got it, John. I got yeah, it. Okay. Uh, uh, best when explained. So I just figured that. that going with, two, I'm going with uh, 10 off. Hold on. Uh, be uh, twenty one dollars half. That be. Uh, Would it help? We're looking at we're looking at uh, one hundred and eighty dollars US. Would it help if I told you this? You sold son out. of a bitch. Hundred. And seventy nine dollars. <laughs> so, Danny, you're saying one eighty. Oh, sorry, Val, you're saying one eighty. Danny, you're saying one seventy nine on a box that sold out within thirty minutes of pre order, oh. containing a single character that's only available in this box right now. <laughs> that, oh, I didn't Danny realize DeVito. that. Danny De- Devito's in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, Val, you got it. The actual cost was two forty nine ninety nine. People love the Devito. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's all I got to say. Uh, guys, I'm sorry this was uh, such a bummer of a week, uh, but I think it, it touched oh. on some important things. That is, people get far too worked up about uh, little toy soldiers. Yeah, I rambled a lot about the Haywo thing. It's well worth a watch. I thought it was great. I suggest you all watch it. I think you uh, would enjoy. I thought it was a very good commentary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Danny, what are some kind of takeaways you want you want to mention from tonight, or, or kind of anything that you want to add to the debate? To what to the debate of what that women custodies exist? Yeah. Look, I'm all I'm gonna say is this like it's okay to not like to to think that the change is like it, to be upset about the change, like that it changed that way, but like it's a good change overall, and uh I think it's better for the game that it exists and the army is better and more inclusive and functionally it doesn't change anything about any models that you want to purchase or play with for your army none of that actually matters so getting upset about it is pretty stupid i like <laughs> when your eyes it. appear to be closed or looking down uh while you were saying that so it makes it seem like you were reading from a prepared statement <laughs> no, I was, I was <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i appreciate um, that was just because danny's eyes <laughs> were rolled so far into the back of his head that they appeared to be shut so <laughs> I sort of equate it to I love Star Wars. I've always loved Star Wars, and, and I've had a troubling relationship with it um, since the the late nineties. Um, when they announced the prequels were coming out, obviously super excited. Cause I'm like, yeah, new Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I've always loved it. And then when I went to see the Phantom Menace, um, it was shit. Yeah, uh, and I, I know there's there's a, a faction of the internet who who like love these movies now, and kind of it's. And even I, I ironically did it because it was really funny. It's one of the jokes I did for like two years where the first year wasn't funny and then it turned. Um, but they weren't good. And the reason is they weren't made for me. Um, Star Wars as a, a concept is made for 12 year olds, uh, specifically a 12 year old boys, not 12 year old girls. That's who's that the, the target audience is for. And it's kind of realizing that these things are no longer made just for me. Um, and my expectations of them are going to be different because I am at a different place than, than what the target audience is. And that's okay. 
um, but you can't necessarily invalidate the new ideas that are coming and the changes that are happening because they're new and scary and they kind of take away what your idea of the thing is. So no one's taking anything away from you. If you want to play your custodians as all male, fantastic. Go ahead, do it. Uh, GW aren't going to kick down your door and ask to see the vaginas of your custodian models. Like that, that's just not a thing. It's not a thing that's going to happen. Um, you are free to forge your narrative. We made fun of that term for fucking years, but dude, forge your own narrative. If you don't want to do it, fantastic, but don't take away from other people. So make your own story, do your own thing, but don't feel that your place is to tell others how to enjoy the hobby. Um, that's my overly serious ending of it. Um, I just, uh, uh, as an epilogue, John, I'd, I'd just like to call back to an earlier slide and ask you to show your work and uh, cite your evidence for when the, the joke actually turned and became funny. Um, <laughs> Which one? <never. laughs> um, not humorous at all. It's almost like I've spent the past three weeks working on, like I said, my um, capstone college project about uh star wars fans and how they interact with the ip um mm. which i should have just done warhammer now because well i would have had to rewrite everything this week and that's not going to happen um yeah. but yeah it's, it's sort of like people need to accept that things aren't necessarily just for them anymore and there might not no longer be the target audience but that doesn't change anything about how you interact with it um yeah. I, I, will, I will say like that's a very I mean, Star Wars is a is is a good example. In in like, I had to come to a point where I just everything I saw for the most part just made me mad mm -hmm. for Star Wars. And it wasn't because of any of the wokeness culture war shit. It was just to me they were just so horribly heartbreakingly disappointing. Because to me it was like this really cool universe that was super deep, and they had so many cool things that they could do. And when they had you know, I was an expanded universe guy, and I loved all the fucking cool places they went with it, and it felt like this massive world you could you could sort of participate in. And then the movie started happening, and everyone was just someone else's brother or son or daughter, and everyone in this giant galaxy was related to one another. And whoopsie, I just found the Millennium Falcon. You know, like it was just it was just it was just bad. It was very small, and I couldn't and I couldn't hear someone talking about Star Wars without wanting to shit all over Star Wars, and I just had to be like, I'm a grown-up. Other people like this. Shut the fuck up. Same thing happened to me in 40K, right? So, like, 40K, like, I, for whatever reason, I got really sour about it, and, and anytime I was talking about the game, I could only say shitty things, and that takes away from the people who genuinely fucking love it, and if it's for a good reason or a horrible reason, like, suddenly custodians have vaginas you know what if 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 that is something that is just going to make you hate it and and you're you're going to be upset about it and it's not it takes your joy away i don't think that's something that should but hey if that's the fact find something fucking else i'm pretty sure most of these people can go shoot guns or something mm -hmm. so like go do something else i will have to say chills because that that's about you know why new star wars the disney star wars fails is because it relies on nostalgia and trying to retell old stories mm. and nothing will ever succeed if you stay in the past and keep trying to retell the same old stories and connect everything in the same way the only way these these universes and these ideas and these ips stay fresh is if you tell new stories with new characters and new ideas um <clears throat> We joke about the fact I hate Rogue One. I hate Rogue One because of like technical reasons, but it was a story no one was asking to see. Um, and no one was like, Yeah, we need to do that movie. It released, it was super popular. The Mandalorian, no one asked to see a uh, show about a, a like The Mandalorian. No one was asking for that. It, it came out, it was super popular. And then they did Book of Boba Fett. No one wanted that. It was just retreading old characters. It was terrible. So it's solo, a Star Wars story. Again, it's just retreading old ideas. It wasn't well received. You have to evolve to keep your IP fresh. You have to keep moving forward. Um, otherwise, it just stagnates and it dies. It's about I'd, get, books. I'd give you your diploma right now. It's, I have a very poorly <laughs> set up website that says a lot of these things. Here. <laughs> 
called the Renaissance effect and getting away from it. If you, if you want to get into that, it's, it's a f fascinating thing and about why people are so passionate, um, so passionate about these properties is before I'm going to do it real quick. Cause we have time 1970s. Oh um, everyone's looking at movies and film like um like people look at renaissance paintings so you're looking at it there's a frame a defined frame defined things that are going on and you're looking at it and you're appreciating it and you don't feel as personally invested because you're observing someone else's art um what things like warhammer and modern movies and especially the way the internet is done is it's taken the frame away mm -hmm. so you're no longer observing the picture you're a part of it you, you put yourself in there you're personally invested in this and this is why we see such shitty guttural reactions because you're not making a change to a property or you're not adding a new story in a universe. You are affecting someone's personality or their life because they're a part of the thing. And when you change the thing, you're changing that person, which is where all this defensiveness comes from. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. So the, the Renaissance effect is fin fin fascinating. Um, and it really helps me deal with just chuds on the internet because again, it's probably even way more, like apparent or effective in 40k for people because the amount of extra time and like right. energy oh, yeah. that people spend in it that like they put their personal like touch on that for so many hours before they even play a game most likely exactly and, yeah. and that's why these people react this way is because they see these changes not as a change to lore not as a change to, to 40k but as a change to themselves that's being dictated by someone else and they don't like that if if what you're into is just ripped hard bodied dudes in golden armor, um, and Grim suddenly there's there's ladies in there, yeah, that's no change. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna change your perspective on shit. Uh, no, I and I, John, I, well said. I I, uh, I think that's all some cool stuff. Um, just, yeah, and I agree. My like I said my my. My four-year journey of, of half-assing this show and other shows that I've done is about to end, and it ends in a place where I've learned a lot uh, and developed a lot of rhetorical skills and media literacy and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's 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 done. The yeah. show has always been about media literacy for ten thousand years. Yeah, perfect. Um, but yeah, and also yeah, I just want to say female custodies bad. Oiled up JoJo references with custodian's <laughs> helmet. Great. Um, Val, Danny, plug plug your things. Let's get out of here so you can have enjoyable evenings. Uh, come check out the new uh, episode of uh, that Oral World Charm. We're reviewing the FAQ and the changes there. Um, I believe that will is coming out soon or will be out very soon. I know we just put our Patreon stuff up today. Oh, sweet. So, um uh oh we did we did our arcane channel review for for Erks and goblins this morning um it was pretty oh, fun I um i would recommend you listen to the old world charm version because uh, i really really enjoyed that and um i have fond memories of white knuckling and driving my car listening to an early release version of it <laughs> in the united kingdom uh, trying to prepare for Tabletop Tactics, which is going live this weekend, I've been assured, on YouTube. You oh, can sick. watch Val uh, try and beat the Bard on Tabletop Tactics on YouTube. It's going over 100K, guys. Has to. It's got it. It's going straight to the top, guys. The star power is, is palpable. So Unbelievable, yeah. Oh, and then, again, uh, check out uh, Danny and Crude, Old World Charm for everything Warhammer Fantasy Base, and check out Val and Rob and Rob's fourth favorite podcast he does now. Um, on Squarebase. <laughs> Squarebase is close to his heart. I, he, he wouldn't. You wouldn't leave me for two much more famous people. Well. I, I very much enjoy. I, 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 <laughs> I caught an episode of Jugs this morning, and then it was quite fantastic. Um, they were told, I, I can empathize because they were told that the name they originally chose wasn't uh, SEO searchable enough um, for for Warhammer, so they called it Jugs instead. And uh, Jugs that level of uh, <laughs> nice assholeness. Amazing. Uh Dickie, anything you want to add? No, I'm tired. I'm gonna let's go to bed. That's Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Dicky. What a Val, great note. What bed. a great note. Uh Danny, myself, uh, let's go read 20 pages that we really don't want to. Uh no, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have to go watch a 1970s sitcom tonight. That's my school. Oh, uh, that's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. They use the F word a whole bunch. It's great. Uh, wow. But aside from that, <laughs> uh, from everyone here at Grim After Dark, uh, thank you for joining in. You can find all of our socials in every way to support us at GrimAfterDark.com. We'll be back live next Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern-ish. Um, and from, yeah, whatever. See you next Tuesday. It's time to step into the grim darkness With nerds gather talking Warhammer madness Grim after dark, the podcast with the hosts John, Danny and Val, but they're not the most Claiming to be experts, but it's all a facade Talking about battles and dice rolls, they're all odd Trying to sound cool with their Warhammer talk But I'm here to expose, it's all just squawk Nerds, nerds, everywhere I see Talking Warhammer this, like it's a decree But let me tell you, homie, it is all just a game in the real world, homie, we are not the same. So put down the dice, step out of the dog. It's time to live life, nerd, make your own mark. Grim after dog, the nerd's playground. Talking Warhammer, this, acting all profound. But when I listen, it's all just a bunch of noise. I love roasting nerds and their stupid ass toys. <sighs> stupid ass toys, I wanna grab them. Put my hands around the neck, squeeze, squeeze, Warhammer, squeeze. Until they can't breathe or breathe again. <laughs> Tell a friend, tell a friend, I'm out here roasting nerds again. <laughs>